Hi everyone, it's Professor Pimpton. In this video, we're going to talk about quadratic functions and their graphs. We're going to find out in this video that functions that are defined by polynomial expressions are actually called polynomial functions. And the graph of polynomial functions can have many peaks and valleys in their graph. And for this reason, it makes polynomial functions suitable models for real-world situations. So let's talk about what a polynomial function is first. So a polynomial function is defined as degree n is the highest exponent on the variable x. So a polynomial function will be of this form. So a sub n is the number in front, or it's called the coefficient of the x to the n power. So n is the highest power on the x variable, so that's called the degree of the polynomial function. The next term is a number in front, a sub n minus 1, and it'll be times x to the n minus 1 power. The number in the exponent will be 1 less than the degree of the polynomial function, potentially. Plus, you could have several terms in a polynomial function, but eventually you may have a sub 1 times x, that is a sub 1 is a number, times the variable x to the first power, plus a sub 0, and a sub 0 is just a number, and there is x to the 0 power, which is just 1. So that's why it doesn't show up. The only restriction is that the a sub n cannot be 0, otherwise the degree of the polynomial would not be n. So a polynomial function has these a sub n, a sub n minus 1, a sub n minus 2, all the way down to a sub 1, a sub 0. These are called coefficients for the polynomial function, and these are real numbers. And then the power, the highest power on the variable x, is called the degree of the polynomial function. We've actually already seen two different types of polynomial functions. A polynomial function of degree 0 would just be a single number, or a constant term, a sub 0, and this is what's called a constant function. So p of x equals a sub 0 is called a constant function, because a sub 0 is called the constant term in a polynomial function. Or we've also seen functions of this form, p of x is equal to a sub 1 times x plus a sub 0. So we have some number, some coefficient, times the variable x to the first power, plus the constant term a sub 0. This looks very similar to y equals mx plus b. It looks like a sub 1 is the slope of this linear function, and a sub 0 is the y-intercept. And this was called a linear function, because x was raised to the first power, or degree 1, for a polynomial function. And so linear functions and constant functions, we know their graphs are straight lines. Well, in this section, we're going to study polynomial functions of degree 2, and those are called quadratic functions. And we know the graph of a quadratic function is what's called a parabola. It'll be a U-shaped graph. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to understand the graph of a parabola is related to its quadratic function. We're going to identify the vertex, the x-intercepts, and the y-intercept, and also the shape of the parabola from the quadratic function expressed in either standard or vertex forms. We're going to use the discriminant to determine the number and the type of x-intercepts. We're going to also talk about how to determine the maximum and minimum value of a quadratic function. So let's talk about quadratic functions. What do they actually look like in terms of a formula? So a quadratic function is a polynomial function. So quadratic functions are polynomial functions, but they are degree 2 polynomial functions. And they are of this form. f of x is equal to, well, instead of using a sub 2, a sub 1, and a sub 0, it's more commonly that we use a, b, and c to represent the coefficients of the x squared, the x term, and the constant term for a quadratic function. The a, b, and c are real numbers. And so a is the coefficient of the x squared term, the b is the coefficient of the x term, and c is the constant term. Notice that a cannot be 0, otherwise it will not be a quadratic function because the first term would just be 0 and it just disappears. We would have a linear function instead. So the domain of a quadratic function, notice that you're never divided by 0 for any x value that you input into the function, and you'll never take the square root or an even root of a negative number. And so the domain of the quadratic function is a set of all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity, and we also know the graph of a quadratic function is called a parabola. So let's talk about how to graph quadratic functions using standard form. So we're going to graph a function, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So this is a quadratic function because the highest power on the variable x is 2. And so the coefficients are a, b, and c. We're going to take this quadratic function and rewrite it into a very special algebraic form called standard form, which is this form. f of x is equal to a times the quantity, x subtract h inside the parentheses, which is all squared, plus k. This is going to be very important for us because we're going to be able to identify what is the vertex, what is the axis of symmetry, the shape of the graph, and also to identify any transformations that we can actually use to graph the quadratic function from the basic quadratic function y equals x squared. So the standard form of a quadratic function. So a quadratic function written in the form f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c can be expressed in what's called standard form which is f of x equals a times the quantity x minus h all squared plus k by completing the square. 
We're going to do that in the next example. The graph of f of x is called a parabola. The vertex is the number h for the x-intercept, and k is the y-intercept. So notice inside the parentheses, it's x subtract, but the x-coordinate is just what's after the subtraction sign for the vertex, and k is the same number that appears outside the parentheses that's being added or subtracted. That's your y-coordinate for the vertex. And the parabola is opening up or opens down, depends on the value of a. If a is a positive number that's been factored outside the parentheses, then the graph, the parabola, will open up, and if the a is a negative number, then the graph will open down. Sometimes standard form is also called vertex form because it identifies the vertex as the point h comma k by just identifying what this function in vertex form looks like. What we're going to discuss first is the shape of the parabola. So we know that a parabola will open up if the a that's been factored out of standard form or vertex form is a positive number. So if this number on the outside that is being multiplied by x minus h in parentheses squared, if that a is a positive number, then your parabola will open upward, which means that the vertex is h comma k from the vertex form or standard form, and the vertex is going to be a local minimum point. Also notice in this graph that the graph, the parabola, is symmetric with respect to this dashed line. This is called the axis of symmetry, and since it's a vertical line, it has an equation that is x equals, and if it passes through the vertex, it must be x equals h, whatever that value is. On the other hand, if the parabola opens downward, the a that's been factored out is a negative number, and so it'll be less than zero, which means the parabola will open down, and the vertex is the highest point on the graph, and so that is called a local maximum point now. The vertex is still h comma k, that's from the standard form or vertex form, and again, the graph looks like it's symmetric with respect to this line called the axis of symmetry, which is x equals h, because it passes through the vertex, which has the x value of h. And so the importance of the quadratic function written in this form, the standard form, or sometimes called vertex form, f of x equals a times the quantity x minus h all squared plus k, you can identify the vertex very easily because it's the point h comma k for the vertex, and you also can identify this symmetry line called the axis of symmetry because that will be x equals h. That is the equation of the vertical line where the parabola is symmetric with respect to. So as we're going to find out really quickly is that if you have the function written into standard or vertex form, you can also identify the, the transformations of the graph from the basic quadratic function of y equals x squared. And so notice that if you have an a that's been factored out at the parentheses, that will identify as a vertical stretch if a is greater than 1, or it will be a vertical shrink if the a is between 0 and 1. We also have the transformation for vertical shift because the value of k on the outside of the parentheses is actually going to shift the entire graph up if k is positive, and it will shift the graph down if k is negative. And so that's going to just affect the y values. And if you are affecting the x values, notice that inside the parentheses it's not just x that's being squared, it's x subtract h that's all being squared. And so if you have an x minus h inside the parentheses, that means it's going to be a horizontal shift. So now that we know how to find the vertex, once the function has been written into standard or vertex form, we also can identify other key features or key points that are on the graph of a quadratic function. And those are called x-intercepts, or just intercepts. So we have this theorem that's called the x-intercepts of a quadratic function. So notice that there are using a, b, and c to write out what's called the discriminant. And the a, b, and c were the coefficients of the quadratic function. The a was the coefficient in front of the x squared, the b was the coefficient for x, and c was the constant term. So if you calculate this number, called the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, if it turns out to be a positive number, you will have two different x-intercepts, and that will tell you that the graph will cross the x-axis at those two different x values. If the discriminant b squared subtract 4 times a times c is equal to 0, then the graph, the quadratic function, will have exactly one x-intercept, and the x-intercept is the vertex, the graph will touch the x-axis at the vertex, and it will bounce off or turn around. On the third case, what if the discriminant b squared subtract 4ac is a negative number? That means you're going to have no x-intercepts. The graph, or the parabola, will not touch or cross the x-axis at all. It'll stay entirely above the x-axis or entirely below the x-axis. It does not touch or cross the x-axis if the value of the discriminant is a negative number. So one other thing that we can tell from the graph of the quadratic function, the parabola, is that whether the graph is opening up or down, we also have the vertex as the lowest point or the highest point. It also tells us where the graph is decreasing and increasing. So it looks like if your graph is opening up, then the graph will be decreasing until you get to the vertex, and then afterwards the graph will be increasing.
And notice that if the graph has two x-intercepts, it'll cross the x-axis at two different x-values. Notice on the second case, it looks like the vertex is your local minimum point because the graph opens up again. But it looks like the vertex is the only x-intercept for your graph. And so this will occur whenever the discriminant is equal to zero. And so the graph is decreasing on the left side because the graph is opening up, and then the graph is increasing on the right side of the vertex. The last case that we have is that what if the graph doesn't cross the x-axis at all? Then the graph will stay entirely above the x-axis, or the graph could stay entirely below the x-axis. But if the graph is opening up, we know that the vertex will be a local minimum point again, and the graph will be decreasing on the left side of the vertex and increasing on the right side of the vertex. So each of these three cases are determined by the value of the discriminant, b squared subtract 4 times a times c. So in the following problems, we're going to use a set of steps for graphing a quadratic function to identify all these key features or characteristics of a quadratic function with its graph called a parabola. So we're going to take a function that looks like f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c and rewrite it first into standard form or vertex form. So we got to identify the vertex. So example one, standard form of a quadratic function. Graph each quadratic function after determining the following characteristics of its graph. So the first thing we're going to do is express the quadratic function in standard or sometimes called vertex form. So that way we can describe the transformations used to obtain the graph from y equals x squared. We also can obtain the vertex from the vertex form or standard form. We also can identify the shape of the graph, also the domain range, whether the graph is increasing or decreasing, whether it's a maximum or minimum value. We get all that information just by knowing what is the function, the quadratic function in vertex form or standard form. So number one, let's look at the function f of x equals 2x squared plus 8x plus 5. We're going to take this function and rewrite it into that special algebraic form called standard form or sometimes called vertex form. So notice that f of x is equal to 2x squared plus 8x plus 5. We're going to group the x terms together first, so group them in parentheses. So 2x squared plus 8x inside parentheses, and then the plus 5, the constant term, will be outside the parentheses. We're going to find out what is the value of a first. So factor out the coefficient that's in common between 2 and 8. Well, it's 2. So factor out 2 from both 2x squared and 8x. You'll have x squared plus 4x left over. So 2 times the quantity, x squared plus 4x, and then outside the parentheses is plus 5. So we talked about that if we want to find out vertex form or standard form, we need to complete the square. So what that means is that we need to take this parentheses, that is x squared plus 4x, and be able to add a value or a number that's inside the parentheses so it becomes a perfect square trinomial, so that it will factor as a perfect square. So let's find out that value that we need to add inside these, the parentheses with x squared plus 4x. So complete the square. You take the value in front of the x, which is the b coefficient. So b is equal to 4. You divide it by 2, so b divided by 2 would be 4 divided by 2, which is 2. And so now you take this value 2 and you square it. So that would be b divided by 2, and you square that value. So that would be 2 squared will be 4. So that means we need to add 4 inside the parentheses with x squared plus 4x, so that the inside of the parentheses is a perfect square trinomial. They'll have three terms, and it'll be a perfect square. So x squared plus 4x plus 4, so add 4 inside the parentheses. But now we've changed the function if we've added 4 inside the parentheses. We need to undo that as well. We want to be able to add 0 so that the function doesn't change. So look what happens if we actually add 4 inside the parentheses. It's really 2 times 4 whenever you distribute the 2 through the parentheses. So we've really added 8 to the function. We need to subtract 8 outside the parentheses so that way we're adding 0 and the quadratic function is the same function that we originally started off with. So add 4 inside the parentheses is really being multiplied by 2, which is really 8. So subtract 8 outside the parentheses. So what's the purpose of complete the square? Notice that x squared plus 4x plus 4, that does factor. It's a perfect square trinomial. What are two numbers that multiply to 4 and the same two numbers need to add to 4? The coefficient in front of the x? Well, it's 2 and 2. So that would be 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 2. Outside the parentheses is negative 3, so minus 3. And so now you have x plus 2, that is a perfect square, because you have x plus 2 times itself. So now you have 2 times x plus 2 in parentheses, all squared, and then subtract 3. This is called standard form, or vertex form. And what's so important about this, is that we can just look at this function now, the quadratic function, and identify what is the vertex, what's the shape of the graph, where's the axis of symmetry, whether the graph is increasing or decreasing, and also the domain and range. We get all that information just from this form called standard form or vertex form. And we can also identify the transformations of the graph as well from y equals x squared. So let's start with the vertex. Notice that this function has x plus 2. 
Well, vertex form, or standard form, was x subtract h. The x coordinate of the vertex is really negative 2 because it's x subtract negative 2 to get a x plus 2. So the vertex, the h, is negative 2, and the k is what's being added or subtracted outside the parentheses, so k is negative 3. So the vertex is negative 2, comma negative 3. That's the point on the graph. That's the vertex. The axis of symmetry was x equals h. Well, h was negative 2, so it's x equals negative 2 is that symmetry line that passes through the vertex. We also know the shape of the parabola. Notice that we factored out 2 originally. Well, this is positive 2. So since a is equal to 2 and it's positive, the shape of the graph or the shape of the parabola will open up, which means that the vertex will become a local minimum point. And also what we can find out from just the vertex form or standard form are transformations of the graph from y equals x squared, the basic quadratic function. So notice that we factored out 2. The 2 is greater than 1, so that is identifying a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. That's the value of a. Notice that we are shifting the graph down 3 units because the k is negative. So vertical shift down 3 units from y equals x squared. And we also have a horizontal shift left 2 units because it's not x squared, it's x plus 2 all squared. So it looks like we replaced x with x plus 2 to obtain this quadratic function when it's written in standard form. And so that is a horizontal shift left 2 units. So now that we know what the vertex of the quadratic function is, let's actually identify other key points on the quadratic function's graph, or the parabola. So let's find out what the y-intercept is. This is where the graph will cross the y-axis. Well, if it's crossing the y-axis, the x value is 0. We can either plug 0 into the quadratic function when it's written in standard form or vertex form, or we can plug 0 into the original function. So let's plug 0 into the vertex form, or standard form. We have 2 on the outside, times x is replaced with a 0 to find the y-intercept, plus 2, all in parentheses that's being squared, then subtract 3. So notice you have to do order of operations. So inside the parentheses will be 2. You have 2 squared, and then multiply by 2, then subtract 3, and the y value turns out to be 5. So the y-intercept for this function will be 0, 5. So another key feature or key point on the graph of a parabola is where the x-intercepts are. Does the graph cross the x-axis? Does it touch the x-axis and turn around? Or does it not even touch or cross the x-axis at all? So x-intercepts are where the y-value is 0, so it's on the x-axis. So take your entire function and set it equal to 0. You can either use the original function, 2x squared plus 8x plus 5 equals 0, or you can use vertex form and set that equal to 0. Either way, you're going to find the x-intercepts. So let's use this original function, 2x squared plus 8x plus 5, and we're going to set it equal to 0, which is the y-value. And so notice that the coefficients we had were a was 2, the b was 8, and c was 5, the coefficients in front of the x squared, the x term, and the constant term. And so now if you want to solve this quadratic equation, you can use either factoring, if it factors easily, or you can use a quadratic formula. So as a reminder, here's a quadratic formula. x is equal to, these are the solutions to the quadratic equation. It's the opposite of b, plus or minus, square root, b squared subtract 4 times a times c, and it's all divided by 2a. Not just the square roots divided by 2a, but the entire numerator is divided by 2a. And so now it's substituting the values a, b, and c from the coefficients from the original function. So a is equal to 2, b is equal to 8, and c equals 5. We'll have x is equal to the opposite of b, so opposite of 8 will give you negative 8, plus or minus square root. b squared will give us 8 squared inside the square root. Subtract 4 times a, so 4 times 2, times c, which is 5. So inside the square root, it looks like 8 squared subtract 4 times 2 times 5, and then it's all divided by 2 times a, which is 2 times 2. And so let's simplify this completely as far as we can. So x is equal to negative 8 plus or minus. Inside the square root, it looks like 8 squared 64. 4 times 2 times 5 is 40, so you'll have 64 minus 40 inside the square root, and then the denominator is 4. So inside the square root becomes 24, so it's negative 8 plus or minus square root 24, all divided by 4. And so now you can simplify this square root. Square root 24, you need to find out what is the largest square number that goes into 24 evenly. Well, it's 4. So rewrite square root 24 as square root 4 times square root 6, and square root 4 becomes 2, and square root 6 cannot be simplified any further. So we'll have negative 8 plus or minus, square root 4 becomes 2, square root 6 stays square root 6, and it's all divided by 4. Now the reason why you want to simplify the square root 24 is notice that the numerator has a 2 in common now. If you factor out a 2 from the numerator and divide by 4, it actually will simplify to negative 4 plus or minus square root 6 all divided by 2. And so it looks like we have two x-intercepts because the discriminant was 24. The number that's inside the square root, b squared subtract 4ac, is called the discriminant. 
and it turned out to be 24, positive 24. So we have two x-intercepts. We'll have one x-intercept when it's negative 4 plus square root 6 all divided by 2, which is about negative 0 0.775. And then the other x-intercept is at x equals negative 4 subtract square root 6 all divided by 2, which will be approximately negative 3.225. So we have where the graph will cross the y-axis, 0, 5, and we also have where the graph will cross the x-axis, these two different x values. Another thing that we can find out from the shape of the parabola is whether the graph is either increasing or decreasing. So notice that the graph is opening up, so the graph is decreasing from negative infinity to negative 2, which is the x-coordinate of the vertex, and the graph will be increasing on the right side of the vertex, which would be negative 2 to infinity. We already talked about that the vertex is a local minimum point, the smallest y value that we'll have on the graph is y equals negative 3. And we also can talk about the domain and range. The domain of any quadratic function is negative infinity to infinity, or the set of all real numbers. And the range, since we know that the minimum y value is negative 3, the graph will go no farther down than y equals negative 3, and that is included because that is the vertex. So y is negative 3, so it's included with a square bracket, and the graph will go up because the graph will open upward, and it will continue going up forever. So negative 3 to infinity square bracket on negative 3. And so whenever you put all this information together, you'll have this graph. The vertex of the parabola was at negative 2, negative 3. That's the lowest point on the parabola. We also have the graph will cross the y-axis at 0, 5. We also have x-intercept at negative 3.225, comma 0, and also at negative 0 0.775, comma 0. That's where the graph will cross the x-axis. And we also have this symmetry line called the axis of symmetry, which will be x equals negative 2. All right, let's go through the same steps, but for a different function this time. Number two, the function is f of x is equal to negative 3x squared plus 6x plus 1. We're going to take this function first and rewrite it into that special algebraic form called standard form or vertex form, so we can identify the vertex. We also can identify the axis of symmetry, domain and range, shape of the parabola, increasing, decreasing. We get a lot of information just from the vertex form or standard form, so let's do that first. So we have f of x is equal to negative 3x squared plus 6x plus 1. Group your x terms together, so negative 3x squared plus 6x in parentheses. Keep the plus 1 outside the parentheses. Factor out the value of a, which is the coefficient in front of the x squared, so factor out negative 3 from both coefficients for x squared and the x. So you'll have negative 3 times the quantity, x squared subtract 2x after you factor out negative 3, the plus 1 stays on the outside of the parentheses. So now we need to complete the square again. We need to find out what do we need to add inside the parentheses so x squared minus 2x plus some number becomes a perfect square trinomial, and it will factor as a perfect square. And so we need to take the b, the coefficient for the x, which is negative 2, divide b by 2. So b divided by 2 would be negative 2 divided by 2, or negative 1. And now take negative 1 and square. So b divided by 2 in parentheses squared will be negative 1 in parentheses squared, which is 1. So we need to add 1 inside the parentheses with x squared minus 2x, so it becomes a perfect square trinomial. So negative 3 times the parentheses, x squared subtract 2x, plus 1, and then keep in mind, we also need to undo this outside the parentheses because we want to be able to add 0 so that the quadratic function doesn't change. We just want to rewrite this quadratic function into vertex or standard form. So we have negative 3 times x squared minus 2x plus 1. Notice that if we add 1 inside the parentheses, we are really subtracting 3 because it would be negative 3 times 1, that's negative 3. Well, you need to undo that outside the parentheses, so you need to add 3. That way it's minus 3 plus 3, and that is 0. So the function stays the same value. And so now why we want to complete the square is what's inside the parentheses will factor as a perfect square. You have negative 3 on the outside, that's the value of a. You have x squared minus 2x plus 1, that does factor. Two numbers that multiply to 1, and the same two numbers need to add to negative 2. Well, it's negative 1 and negative 1. So it'll be negative 3 times x minus 1 times x minus 1, or x minus 1 all squared. And then outside the parentheses you have a plus 4. So this is called standard form or vertex form, and now we can identify the vertex. It looks like the value that follows the subtraction sign is the value of h, so h is the x-coordinate of the vertex, it's 1, and the y-coordinate of the vertex is 4, the value of k. So the vertex is at 1, 4. So h was 1, so the vertical line will be x equals 1 for the axis of symmetry. We also know that the graph will open down because the value of a is negative 3, so it's negative, and so the graph will open downward, which means the vertex will be at a local maximum point this time, which means the local maximum value for the graph is y equals 4, which is the y value from the vertex. The graph will go no higher than y equals 4. And so now we can talk about the domain and range. The domain of a quadratic function is always the set of all real numbers, or negative infinity to infinity. 
But the range, since the graph has the highest point at y equals 4, so the range will be negative infinity to 4, and 4 you do want to include because that's where the vertex is located. So negative infinity to 4 with a square bracket. We also can talk about where the graph is increasing and decreasing from the shape of the parabola. So if the graph is opening down, notice that the graph is increasing first on the left side of the vertex. So the graph is increasing from negative infinity until you get to the x coordinate, x equals 1, which is the vertex. And the graph is decreasing on the right side of the vertex, so it's decreasing from 1 to infinity. Again, only use the x values for increasing and decreasing intervals. And you also only use parentheses because you don't want to include x equals 1 where it's increasing or decreasing. That's where it changes from increasing to decreasing. So now, another thing that we can do when the function is written to standard form or vertex form, we also talk about the transformations of the graph from y equals x squared. So notice if we have a negative on the outside of the parentheses that's been factored out, that's a reflection across the x-axis. The 3 is larger than 1, so that is a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. The plus 4 outside the parentheses makes it become a vertical shift up 4 units. And it's x subtract 1 rather than x that's being squared, so this is a horizontal shift right one unit. So we have all this information just by knowing the standard form or vertex form for this quadratic function. We also can identify other key points by finding out the y-intercept and the x-intercept. So let's do that next. The y-intercept is whenever x is equal to zero. So the graph will cross the y-axis whenever x is equal to zero. If you substitute zero into the original function or vertex form or standard form, you'll get this. f of zero is equal to negative three times zero minus one in parentheses that's being squared plus 4, if you simplify this, the y value is 1. So the graph will cross the y-axis at 1, so 0, 1 is the y-intercept. Let's talk about the x-intercepts next. The x-intercepts is where the graph could potentially cross the x-axis twice, it could touch the x-axis at the vertex and only have one x-intercept, or maybe the graph stays entirely below or above the x-axis, and it will have no x-intercept. So let's find out what case it is. So x-intercept is where the y value is 0, it will be the x-axis, so f of x, let's use the original function, negative 3x squared plus 6x plus 1. Let's set the y value equal to 0, and let's use the coefficients because we want to use the quadratic formula to solve this quadratic equation. So a is negative 3, b is equal to 6, and c is equal to 1. So the quadratic formula says the solutions to this quadratic equation are of the form the opposite of b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac. The b squared minus 4ac was the discriminant, and it's all divided by 2a. So if you substitute in a, b, and c and simplify, you'll have this. x is equal to the opposite of b, so opposite of 6, that will give you negative 6, plus or minus square root b squared, so that's 6 squared, minus 4 times a, a is negative 3, and c was 1. So inside the square root, you'll have 6 squared, subtract 4 times negative 3 times 1. And then the denominator is 2 times a, which will be 2 times negative 3. So inside the square root, it looks like you have 36 plus 12, so that'll make it square root of 48. So negative 6 plus or minus square root 48 all divided by negative 6. And so now we want to simplify the square root 48 if possible. What's the largest square number that goes into 48 evenly? Well, it's 16. 16 goes into 48 three times. So we can simplify the square root 48 as square root 16 times square root 3. Square root 16 is the whole number 4, and square root 3 cannot be simplified any further. So it's negative 6 plus or minus 4 square root 3 all divided by negative 6. And so now you can simplify this by rewriting negative 6 divided by negative 6, that's just 1, and 4 divided by negative 6 is 2 thirds. So x values are x equals 1 plus or minus 2 squared 3 all over 3. So you have two x-intercepts this time because the discriminant was positive 48. And so if you have a positive discriminant, you'll have two x-intercepts. The graph will cross the x-axis two different x values. So one x value will be at x is equal to 1 plus 2 squared 3 all over 3, which is about 2.155. And the other x-intercept is when x is equal to 1 subtract 2 squared 3 divided by 3, or negative 0.155. And so if you put all this information on the graph to graph this quadratic function, you'll have the vertex at 1 comma 4 that we found out from rewriting this function to vertex form or standard form. We have the x-intercept, 2.155 comma 0, after we solve the quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. We also have the other x-intercept at negative 0 0.155 comma 0. We also have the axis of symmetry. The graph will be symmetric with respect to this vertical line, x equals 1, which passes through the vertex. And we also have the y-intercept with 0 comma 1. Notice from the graph, it looks like the graph will continue to the left and the right forever, so the domain was negative infinity to infinity. 
It looks like the graph goes no higher than y equals 4, so the range was negative infinity to 4 with a square bracket. It looks like the graph is increasing until you get to the vertex, which is x equals 1, and it looks like it's decreasing on the right side of the vertex, or 1 to infinity. So this is a good place to stop our video now that we talked about all the key features of the quadratic function after we rewrite the quadratic function into standard form or vertex form. We can identify the vertex, the axis of symmetry, domain and range, increase and decreasing, transformations of the graph from y equals x squared. We can also identify the shape of the parabola, whether the graph opens up or down, which will tell us whether the vertex is a local maximum point or a local minimum point. And we also talked about how to get the x-intercepts and also the y-intercept, which will actually give us more information about the graph of the quadratic function. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about modeling with quadratic functions.